Let's fucking go. Welcome back to the Black Sheep Narrative. <laughs> Welcome to the Black Sheep Narrative. What's up, people? Good to have you back. I, I don't think that today's episode is going to be quite as long as what we've done in the past, but... We'll see. We'll see. Maybe we'll <laughs> surprise some people. It'll be like three hours long. Be like, no, absolutely fucking not. Don't, don't go. Yeah. Drinking some Pendleton Midnight for those who have never drank it before. It's smooth. Shout out to McKinley Sanders. He he showed me this. I'll tell you what, yeah, this episode brought to you by Pendleton, not sponsored. Not sponsored. Brought to you by. But uh, we just killed Woodford Reserve. Yeah. And I'll be honest with you, this stuff is smooth. I would choose Pendleton over. Yeah, the Midnight is very smooth. Ah, Pendleton, if you're listening, we got your back. We got your back. And sponsor us. <laughs> All right. But what's going on in the news, man? Dude, a lot of shit happened this week. Um, a lot of shit. In, in the global news, in the world news. Um, so we had China met with Russia this week, which was the biggest thing. Um, the, oh, the biggest thing for us. I guess China was going in to try to negotiate talks about having peace in Ukraine and, and what the end goal is for that, and it looks like there was no resolution to that. So no, so it wouldn't be. The war keeps on turning. Yeah, and I guess the thing that does scare me is obviously the crunch has been put on Russia um, <clears throat> from an ec- economic standpoint. So... U.S., we're not really doing trades with Russia. We're not um, supplying, uh, what's a, we're not buying Russian goods. Mm-hmm. We're, we're, we're keeping our money away from them, f- hoping that that would put a crunch on them and it would also help ease the tensions and bring them out of Ukraine. Um, but that's, that's the thing that I picked up on that, that scared me out of their meeting this past week was China said, hey, uh, the lost U.S. dollar... Well, we'll take care of that. We're, we're going to fund your country and help you stay uh, economically safe during this rough time. Yeah, that's not good. No. That's not good. Um, and, and what was scary is I was watching a, a video. It was like the last thing that they said uh, b- between the Chinese Xi Jinping and R- Vladimir Putin. The last thing that they communicated before... Uh, Xi Jinping left. He said, quote unquote, change is coming that hasn't happened in a hundred years and we are driving this change together. Putin replied, I agree. What change? It's the question. <laughs> hundred what, what happened in a hundred years ago? So what, 2023, so 1923? Which was what? What, the Great Depression? World War One? I? I don't know. Yeah, it wasn't World War World I. One. Almost Hitler, Hitler great, came in when? Uh, in the 30s. Right, but th- almost a hundred years, so... Yep. 30s were almost, ah, Jesus Christ. Yep, so 19 hours ago that uh, President Biden ordered airstrikes in Syria. One U.S. contractor was killed and five five U.S. troops were injured following a drone drone attack. And the Pentagon is saying that the drone was manufactured by Iran. Yeah. So we're on that front. We're on watching out for China and the Pacific. We're watching out for Russia and Ukraine. We're kind of... Spreading ourselves thin, it seems like. We have, if you look at it, <clears throat> it's inevitable that something is, is going to happen. We have the two um, communist regimes, right? Yep. Two communist regimes between China and Russia. I don't, think Russia, I, I don't think Russia considers themselves communists, though. A federal republic, constitutional republic, they consider themselves. That doesn't even make sense. No. <laughs> I think they're still communists, right? I don't think like, they were ever communists, though. Were they? I think they were socialist. Right, they are socialist. With USSR 100%. was socialist. No, Russia can no longer be seen as a communist country. You're right. That ended in 1991. So my bad. Yeah. You are correct. We don't want to put out misinformation. Yeah. There's already too much of that. Yes. But... On one side, you have the the alliance between China and Russia, and then on the Western side, you have us rallying the the partnerships with NATO. 
And um, that's the scary thing because if Russia or China does decide to go to war against us, we will pull in NATO allies, which essentially will make it Mm -hmm. another world war. So pay attention to what's going on, people. Um, Yep. Yeah. It's not all doom and gloom. I don't try to say, talk about this. I feel like we talk about uh, a lot about this in the podcast, but also I think it's relevant to talk about because this can affect everyone around the world. Absolutely. Yep. So, another good news. Let's talk about some good news. So, me and you were talking about the VA disability pay cut, mm-hmm. which is kind of fucked, but they shot it down, they said. So, they were going to say, they were going to cap disability. So, for those that don't know, when you get out of the military, um, you go through a whole laundry list of all of your injuries yep. And you write it to the VA, and then they... And the, the big thing that <laughs> that sucks for soldiers, you have to maintain your medical records. Like, they, they won't do it for you. So, like, we've always preached to our soldiers, especially being in a combat MOS, that save, document everything. Save everything that you possibly can, because the one thing that the government will do, and I've seen it time and time again, is they will find a way to get their money. Yep. They will find a way to keep their money in hand and not pay you. So you have to make sure that you you keep everything documented as much as possible. Yep. But yes, yeah, so going into it you go through your 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 testing, you know, they check for hearing loss, they check for physical, you know, ailments, um, anything that's service connected. Yep. Head to toe. Head so to toe. plus like cancer screening supposedly you're supposed to do a cancer screening, but the problem with cancer is 20, 30 years down the road because you were by a burn pit. Um, But they're getting better with that. They have the burn pit registry now. So Mm -hmm. for those who aren't registered, definitely get registered on the burn pit if you were ever in the Middle East. Yeah, so they they go head to toe from you, and then you you put in, you know, whatever ailments you have or whatever happened in the line of duty, um, and then that gets forwarded to the VA, and the VA gives you a rating. And the rating is confusing as fuck. I know, like, every body part is a different percentage, and then once you get, your rating is based on your biggest, whatever your biggest ailment is, whatever, PTSD or, like, my arm, I can't even use my arm, that's your biggest rating, and then they half everything else, so it's very confusing when you're looking at it. You're like, oh, I'm, like, 250% disabled, like, but not really because they don't look at it that way. They're having everything I don't know. I, it's yeah. not. I don't understand confu- how the ratings work. It's confusing. Work, but the VA is the mo- it's the most inefficient system. I don't know if you've heard. Like so, for me, I have to go in um, at least once a year, and they do X rays of my knee. They do X rays of my back just to make sure that I still have the two herniated discs. Yeah. Just to make sure that like my knee, that it's fucking bone on bone still. <laughs> but I don't know if you've heard this shit, right? It's like fine. I don't care. I'll go check that box. Take the take the MRIs. Take the X rays. Whatever. Cool do my blood work, cool, I get Mm -hmm. that, but um, I feel bad because they have, like, we have soldiers that have been to combat that have lost a limb, lost a fucking limb, and that's factored into their disability, and now that they're out, they may live a couple hours away from the closest VA, they still have to go in once a year to prove that, yeah, my leg's still fucking missing. Yeah, it's gone. Like, what type of joke is that? It didn't grow back. Are you kidding me? Like, why do they, like, they need to figure that shit out. Dude, you, but, told me, you told me that story of the one of the representatives from the VA uh, calling you about your PTSD, trying to oh, take yeah. it away from you. It was you. the French lady. The French lady called me in, yeah, and they, they tried to take it away from me, and it was actually, um, it was my, I don't want to call her a psychiatrist, but um, the VA mental health that actually found out about this and, like, stopped it, mm-hmm. stopped it from how she intervened. Which was cool. Like, I didn't, she, like, she contacted me after the fact. She was like, but I guess the reason she stepped in was because it, it didn't just happen to me. It had, she, I wasn't the first soldier she heard about it from. There were multiple soldiers. They were trying to take away the PTSD claim. And, uh, yeah, it, it was super frustrating because me walking in and sitting down with this lady who was French, and she had a real thick French accent. It's like she, she doesn't know what we experienced and why she, she was talking through the, the PTSD things with me. And she was trying to downplay everything that I experienced, you know. And she's like, oh, I think uh, lots of people have anxiety. Because like, like, that's one of the things, like, why yeah. do you think you have PTSD? And, um, like, I, I try to explain to her, like, I, 
I can't go into Costco. I can't go into a crowded, like my anxiety goes through the roof and I become, um, I get anger. It, it becomes like <laughs> you ready to choke somebody the fuck out. And I've had to leave. I've had to leave crowded areas with my wife. I'm like, look, I can't be here. Um, we even went to a concert up north. It was like a three day uh, venue where it was just nonstop music. Mm-hmm. And uh, I had to get the fuck out. I was like, I can't, I can't. Like my anxiety started peaking and, uh, you know, it's hard to control that. And she was like, oh, th- that happens to plenty of people. I don't think that's PTSD and stuff like that. You know, I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? Like, I joined the military at an older age. I was 30 years old. I never, I, I recognize that there are things that are different with me now than before I entered the military. You know, can't sleep at night. You're super uh, hyper vigilant about everything. Yeah. But, so you need some lady to come in from France and, tell you no you don't have ptsd like bitch i you've never seen you haven't seen what i've seen right you have no fucking clue have you, you're gonna be the deciding factor get the fuck out of here <laughs> i don't know sorry that's no no i mean that, yeah that's frustrating especially uh, you don't even know if they've served or wh- what what experience they have so who are you to say what i'm what i'm right. seeing and feeling you know right just calling me a fucking liar. Like, I wish I was lying. I wish I was lying about this and this shit didn't happen. Like, right. I wasn't anxious all the time. I couldn't go to X, Y, and Z places because it brings me back to when I saw yeah. my oh, buddies dude. get fucking and, blown And that's up. the other thing, too. And You may hear, everybody has different experiences. Everybody reacts to things differently, right? So you may have some people that have the nightmares, right? That's not me. I don't have nightmares from my experiences. Um I do wake up constantly throughout the night and I think that's just, it's still service connected because you're, you're ready to go at any instant. So when I hear stuff and I'm in a sleep, like I'm I'm a light sleeper and I wake up, boom, it's like you're ready to go. You're constantly on edge, right? Mm -hmm. I don't have nightmares about what I've seen. However, however, I don't know if you've ever seen the movie, um, Beetlejuice. Yeah. Okay. Kids movie. There's a scene in Beetlejuice that triggers me, and I didn't realize it until I got back from combat. Which right? scene? It's the, I don't know if you, and, and I can't watch it today without, it, it freaks me the fuck out. But um, sitting there watching Beetlejuice with my, at the time, my ex-wife and my daughter, and the scene where the guy stretches his face and pulls his eyes out, mm-hmm. like, looks completely fake. Completely fake. Super just animated claymation type. But that, that was my first experience with combat death. And it didn't look real. Like when you see death and it looks fake and you're staring at it and you can't. And you're like, I just, it's not real. And that triggered me. That, that moment watching a fucking kids movie triggered me and, and broke me down to where I had to leave the fucking room and almost had a panic attack. Because it brought me back to that moment in time. But to have a French lady say, like, you, you don't know, you don't have PTSD, you don't know, <laughs> you know, like, who the fuck are you yeah, that's, to tell me? <clears throat> so, so for all the, the combat soldiers out there, definitely, um, I guess, long story short, keep track of your records, make sure that you take care of yourself. Yep. So to go back full circle, uh, reason why I brought up VA disability is uh, there was a bill or something presented, and supposedly it gets presented every two years or so, that they are trying to cut VA disability pay if you and your spouse make more than $170,000 a year. And it looks like it got shot down again. VA secretary swats down idea to cut VA disability pay. But, um, you know, uh, how I feel is you're entitled to that pay. You know, I don't, I, you signed on the dotted line that your body is property of the U S government and they can do anything that they want to you, send you anywhere, put you in any situation regardless. And then you see, like you talk about, you have buddies that come back and they don't even have fucking legs. And it's like, you're going to cut that because thank God that they were actually successful afterwards after you got out of the military they were successful so i don't think you're disabled anymore you're making money we're going to cut your va benefit or your you know because if you hit 50 percent, right you get uh tricare or 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 lesser lesser um health care if you're at 50 percent 
you cut after like ah you're making too much money. I think we'll cut. You're not disabled anymore. You have yeah. can you but you have cancer. But you're making one hundred seventy thousand dollars. You and your spouse I'm gonna cut it. Frustrates me. I know too many too many people too many veterans that you know have so many fucked up things, yep. cancer, loss of limbs, PTSD, yep. and then they're gonna come back and say. You know what? We need to save money. We need that money. Where the fuck's that money going? You know, I saw a good post and I, I reshared it on Instagram. Um, let me pull it up real quick. Talking about how uh, I don't want to butcher it because I, I like it a lot. We always seem to have enough money to pay for war, but never enough to cover the cost. Yeah. Heavy. It's true. It's true. How many veterans are homeless That's right true. now? Dude, and that's the, that's the shitty thing. I've, I've expressed to my wife, like our budget for self defense is higher than the next. What is it like? Eleven couple 12, countries combined, yeah, right? Yeah, combined, mm-hmm. and it blows my mind because you see the contracts that we pay out for people. Um, I, I don't want to use Andrew as an example, who was on here. Like he he had a you know, a real tough job over there. But you think about the guy pumping fuel at the fuel point. I don't know if you ever, it's a contractor. Mm -hmm. So I remember I was speaking to this guy. We come back off of mission. And the first thing, when you come back off mission, you need to make sure that your equipment is ready to go at a a moment's notice because you might have to go back outside the wire. So with me being a truck commander, we pull back in in our Matt V's, first stop, fuel point. (laughs) Head to the fuel point, make sure, and then after that, you need to make sure you're loaded up with ammo, food, water. You're good to go. But uh, this this guy, he had like no teeth, <laughs> you know. Mm-hmm. He comes up to the truck and he's pumping us full of gas, and um, you know, I just start talking to him, BSing, because I'm 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 excited because we're headed home in like two weeks. I'm like fuck, we're almost out of here. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, hey man, how you doing? Man, we're almost out of here. Fucking, how long you been here? He'd been over there for five years straight. Five years straight. I was like, straight? Like, no breaks? He's like, ah, I've, you know, I've taken off a couple times for like a month, come back. But five years, man. I was like, God damn, why? Why would you do that? Why would you want to be over here for fucking five years straight? It's because of the money. Taxes. It's because of the money. Yep, it's tax-free. Taxes. He, he doesn't have, he, he, room and board over there in Afghanistan is paid for. His food's paid for. He's just collecting that paycheck. He's like, when I return home here in the next two years, I got another two years to remain over here. When I get back home, I'll have enough money I can retire. And all he's doing is fueling up trucks. Pumping fuel. I was like, God Afghanistan. Damn. I mean, hey, kudos to him for working the system. But then it's also frustrating when, you know, a Matt V gets blown up. And me being one of the, uh, I was one of the squad leaders, we'd have to go to the maintenance bay and we have to figure out, we have to sign up on all this shit to, to get our Matt V like, hey, it's got to get in, it's got to get fixed, or we need a replacement. And you sign off on the paperwork. And it's like, we had a blown tire in one, right? Mm-hmm. And that tire, the cost associated with it was $6,800. Like, that's what the government, the, you're paying $6,800 for a fucking tire on an off-road vehicle? Yep. Yep. But, but to your point, we're, we're willing to pay that. We're willing to pay these fucking contracts that I don't know who negotiated, but we did not do a good job as a country negotiating these contracts with these these huge fucking companies. And we're paying them out the ass, but we're not going to take care of our soldiers. Yeah, and unfortunately, a lot of those contracts go to defense contracting companies that uh, people that have signed off on that bill have worked for those defensive con- defense contracting companies in the past. It's like, okay, I've worked for Raytheon. Like, yeah. yeah. Let's let's push some money over there, right? It's uh it's frustrating. I just watched the CBS just came out with their was CBS. I think it's CBS. It's Sixty Minutes is that on CBS? You ever watch Sixty yeah. Minutes? Yeah, they just CBS. had a new one about the Pacific Fleet, Navy Pacific Fleet. Obviously, because of all the China tensions and everything, and they were talking about is the Pacific Fleet ready? How how are we looking? Um, if if war were to happen, what is it looking like? So they were talking to the admiral over of the Pacific Fleet. 
and uh, they were doing digging some research and whatever. And we actually, by the year 2025, I want to say, um, we are going to <laughs> we are going to have less ships in the ocean, l- less na- naval ships in the ocean than China will have. <laughs> and then they were talking about all the failed um, projects that we've had over the years because we haven't been keeping up with our navy. Um, and the, uh, a lot of the cruisers, they were talking about the new battle cruisers that they were trying to push out. Yeah. Billions and billions and billions of dollars. And they have two in the fleet. They were supposed to be like 10 or something like that. They have two. It's like a failed project. But how much money we've been dumping in and it, it, yeah. it just doesn't work out. And how we're retiring. Right now we're retiring more ships than we are building ships. <laughs> <laughs> so our, our force, yeah. It's, yeah, it's, it's frightening. Yeah. Oh, man. Uh, I know. I, I, th- I don't try to keep talking about this. I think it's relevant, and I think people need to know this and, yep. and uh, really come to terms that this is something that we might see in the next decade, you know? Um, so I, I don't try to, like, fear monger or say this is what it's going to be because – Maybe it won't be, yeah. but um, the path that we're headed doesn't look like it's not going to be. Yeah, so what happened to, uh, speaking, what's going on with Donald Trump? Is he getting like arre- he, is well, he getting arrested? Because he, he was like, I will be arrested by Tuesday. Tuesday. And I haven't heard Tuesday anything. And Tuesday came and passed, and <laughs> this motherfucker still. <laughs> Who yeah. knows? He was like, the, the New York DA is coming after me. I need you people to stand up and support. And then nothing happened. Is it because of the insurrection? Is that why they're still pushing? Or is documents in Mar-a-Lago or whatever that... Who knows? I, I don't know either. I just I mean, You just the, brought... You're talking about... I don't know. <laughs> we just got an election year coming up, and it's like so much stuff going on. And, and other news. Um, <laughs> <laughs> in other news, let's talk about some good news. Uh, you're looking at uh, the newest employee of UXO Supplements. Oh, look at this guy. Ooh. And I made the shirt. We did. We, that shirt we made the sexy. shirt. We made that today. Mm-hmm. Um, already sold how many of them? I don't know. We sold. We sold a grip of them. A lot, um, which is cool. But that new printer is fucking bueno. sweet. Yeah. yeah. Nick's gonna help us take things to the next level. <sighs> and uh, yeah, with now we have the shirt printer, and we're probably gonna be coming up with some black sheep narrative shirts. Yeah. Super excited for that. Guys, if you don't know, we, we have uh, well, we have at least one special guest coming on here in the next two weeks. That I'm super fucking we're not, excited. We're not for. gonna we won't we won't uh, divulge who it is yet. Not yet. It's but a big uh, one. It's a big big one. It's big, a big fucking one. It's the biggest and, person uh, that I've ever interviewed. There it's a big disruption within the fitness industry in this gentleman right now. And um, yeah, I can't wait to have him on. And I'm I'm sure he's gonna talk through some of it. We'll see. Yeah, I'm very interested to see. I hope he divulges kind of everything, but it's up to him. You it's know? up to him, yeah, what we talk about. But um, we, we took a gamble, reached out, said, hey, we'd love to have you on the show, and he said, let's fucking do it. And I said, oh, shit. Sometimes you got to throw, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you never so, know until you ask, right? You and, never know. You know what's the worst thing that could happen? They could say no, and that's whatever. Okay, exactly. cool. So look forward to the next episode coming up here shortly. Um, it'll be a doozy. Yeah, I'm excited for that. <sighs> but with that being said, yep, Nick joined the UXO team. I couldn't be more excited. He's uh, got the gym. Man, you got a lot of uh, talking about, like, the, the disability and stuff going on with vets today. Mm-hmm. And you're experiencing it firsthand right now because yep. you're exiting the military. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, and yeah, and, and for me, that was a huge, like, I was looking at, I was going to start interviewing people, and I was like, you know what, nope, I'm bringing Nick on because I know his work ethic, I know what type of duty he is, mm-hmm. and, like, I want UXO to be known for hiring vets. Mm-hmm. Like, let's let's bring on more vets that need jobs that can, and I also know the work ethic in vets. When it talks about getting a mission done, there is no die in a lot of combat vets. Yeah. So I don't know why you wouldn't like why wouldn't you hire veterans like with their leadership skills, whether it was in combat or not, but what the military instills in you mm-hmm. of that discipline and work ethic and 
you know, drive. Mm-hmm. I don't, you'd be, I don't, I don't know why any, co- any company would not hire veterans. Um, but yeah, uh, I, I mean, fuck. So first day, kudos to you, dude. Um, you know, just we're going through the motions. You're showing me how everything operates and everything. And now seeing from the inside looking in and now being in, I'm like, dude, how the fuck did you do this all by yourself? <laughs> how? No idea. Like, I don't know. <laughs> how many hours were we just back doing shipping and receiving and then shirts and everything? And then you're like, oh, I got to do content too. And it's like, yep. dude, we've been back here for six hours. Yeah. Hey. You know what? <laughs> you always, you always start small and you figure out a way, right? Yeah. And I guess I think that goes back to the vet's mentality like you just mission accomplished, you find a way to fucking pull it off. Like we would have these missions that would come down and some of them would be fucking ridiculous. It'd be like 3 days like hey, we're about to go on a mission. Fucking pack a shit ton of water in your backpack cuz we're going out for 4 days. We're going to sit on a fucking mountainside and we got intel rockets are coming through. We're going to mm-hmm. fucking get these motherfuckers. I'm like, what the fuck? Three days. And then my, my smoke, or my platoon sergeant, he would always come back with, gentlemen, failure is not an option. Go get them. Failure is not an option. And I hated fucking hearing that. I hated it. I, I, I remember I pulled my guys aside. The, the one mission we had where there was intel, we could get ambushed too, right? Mm-hmm. I remember I pulled my guys aside after. He was like, failure is not an option. I was like, look, guys. I fucking hate him saying that because failure is always an option, right? It's the easiest option. Yeah. But it's what we choose. So I have confidence in you guys that we're not going to fail because you guys will fail. You guys will choose the higher path. Mm -hmm. We'll get through this together. But just keep in mind the failure is always an option. But we're not going to let that happen. Yeah. It goes back to the mentality of the individual. Mm Mm-hmm. Where am I going to fold or am I going to push forward? So, yeah, I used to hate that, man. Yeah, because you can, failure, failure is an option. Always. If you don't do anything, you fail. Look at, look at how many people choose to fail. <laughs> Give up. It's easy fold to fail. Fold under pressure. So easy. Right? But now, I, like with my definition of failure would be not doing anything. And some definition, that might be different than someone else's, there, right? There is. And there's two different definitions that I look at, right? Like when you're in a scenario like that, you have to choose not to fail. You have to push forward. You have to keep pushing. And, you know, the outcome could be, <laughs> well, we won't go that route. But from the landscape of business looking at it, like failure, failure does occur. And you, you, you're you going to push through and you're going to do everything you can not to fail. But like we've talked about on previous episodes, when you hit that point and you do fail, you learn from it. You learn from it. Uses learning opportunity and you change and you redirect and you push forward. Yeah. It, again, if you're complacent with anything, you're going to fail. Like, mm-hmm. and by not doing anything, you're also failing. At least that's what I believe. Like, some people may be okay with not going above and beyond or trying to do something more of themselves, yep. right? And they're just okay with doing the bare minimum. And that's okay, but I, in my mind, I feel like that's failure, man. Like, in my life, that would be failure. I always want to strive to be better. Exactly. You know? Exactly. And that's why it's different, like, looking at military versus, like, a business aspect because, you know, you could fail at a business idea, but it's, like, how do you react to that failure? If you so folded tomorrow because, whatever, we overextended ourselves, we learn from it, but am I just going to give up and go back to working for corporate America? No, I'm going to come up with a different idea right? Mm -hmm. And course correct and take off with that. So it's interesting because I hope that there's this, (laughs) there's a couple Preston and Heather, and I don't know why I just thought of them, but so she started this plant business and she like brought me in like, Hey, I want to understand how you do this X, Y, Z. And why I'm bringing them up is because I saw her shift and it was the coolest thing ever because she was originally selling plants and she wanted my help with marketing and Instagram and this and that. And I met with them, I gave them some ideas and stuff, but she went on to selling plants, but what she found was she started creating this soil, and she started selling more of the soil, so she she was going one direction with the plants, Mm -hmm. but look at the upkeep it takes with the plants and stuff like that. Yeah. Right? 
So by having this soil, and she also came up with these other products that helped like fertilize the soil, whatever. But she course corrected, and now the soil has become more of a demand than the plants that she was trying to sell, right? Whoa. So it's it's thinking of that from the business aspect is you identify as you're going one direction, but hey, here's something else that's working better. You can always course correct. So I don't see it as failure. You're learning from it, but boom, you course correct and go a different direction. No, I wouldn't see that as failure. It opened a door. It, and you just exactly. took you just took the step into that door. And that it goes would... back to what we've always talked about. Execution, right? Taking action, mm-hmm. recognizing and fucking maneuvering. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's all it is. It's like with me, dude. Until death. I'm selling fucking t shirts, dude. Anyone can put any design on a t-shirt ever and sell it. But because I opened that door and actually put a step and was like, okay, I want to open a business. Like, I really like t-shirts. I've always been a t-shirt head. That's who I am. And I think I could put cool designs on t-shirts. Because of that, I'm now going to open a gym. Yeah. Like, it wouldn't be because of Until Death if I couldn't open a gym. Like, it's, it's crazy. You know, and it, it's putting that step forward and you don't know where it's going to lead to. You don't know what doors mm. are going to open and what opportunities you're going to have, but you have to take that step. Right. But, right. um, I know we talked about bill S dot I've talked about it a lot because like, as this bill progresses and, uh, as of right now, I, I I'm, I'm thinking it's dead. I haven't followed up on it. I haven't heard shit about it, mm-hmm. but it could potentially bankrupt and put all of the smaller supplement companies out of business, even the bigger ones. It's going to basically shift everything over to big pharma, and it's going to screw everybody over. Yeah. But, um, and I thought about that because, it's like, man, if this bill does get passed, like, what do I do next? Because it shuts me down completely. But the skill sets and um, coming from corporate America and being in sales and having to learn how to run a business and the operations side of things and, and the marketing side of things and, I've, I've gained so many skill sets. Even if that happens, like, fuck it. Fuck it. You know, we, we shut down UXO because every supplement company is going to get shut down. Mm-hmm. And now I've got an entirely new skill set that's just going to make me even more valuable going forward. Yeah. So. You'll find your way. But but the, I don't think there's any reason to even put that in your back of your mind to be like, uh, this might, you know, maybe it might happen, but at the same time, like, I'm not worried about it. Like, no. if it happens, it happens. Okay. But, exactly. But guess what? I'm going to fucking adapt and I'll overcome, overcome the situation and then we'll Boom. go on from there. That's you it. Know? Adapt and overcome. That's what I always preach. And so that's why, like, yeah, now, like I said, I haven't heard about this bill. It's not even in the back of my mind. But um, when it was, it's like, yeah, I've got a path forward. Mm-hmm. I know I'm going to be okay. And it's it's having that 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 faith, that, that just trust in yourself. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We, uh, we're trying to open a gym in 30 days. I do not recommend it to anybody. Um, it mm-hmm. has been some of the, this, the last 30 days have been very anxiety prone. It's, <laughs> it's been crazy, but, um, you know, I'm a uh, partner with Alex cup, fucking, uh, pro strong man. And he called me this week. We had a situation going on and we're talking back and forth. And uh, he's like, well, what are, what are we going to do if this, this doesn't happen? Something, you know, something, something was going on. And I was like, one, you got to keep faith. Two, if this doesn't happen, we're still going to press on, dude. We'll figure it out. Like, it always works out in the end, but we're going to put the fucking work and, and drive and we'll figure it out. You always figure it out, right? Because it's always like worse. Uh, Murphy's Law always comes into play w- with anything, like, if something's going to happen, it's going to happen. Whatever the, whatever Murphy's Law is, uh, says, um, basically the worst is going to happen regardless. And uh, I was like, we'll figure it out, dude. We'll yeah. figure it out. There's no worries. Let's, let's keep fucking driving, dude. Let's keep drilling. Let's keep going. Anything that can go wrong will go wrong. Murphy's Law. Yeah. And it's truth, truth, right? Um, but it all worked out. Within a couple of days, it all worked out, you know? It's just keeping that faith, but also having the drive and, hey, if we need to divert, co- or, you know, go off a little course or whatever, we'll yeah. come back. We'll figure it out. It's all good. Yeah. So yeah. you'll figure it out. Everything that I ever thought, like, in my life that was, like, the worst thing ever, always, I always found my way. I always figure it out, you know? You ever have a situation in your life where you're like, this is it. I'm fucked. 
I don't know how I'm going to see tomorrow. I don't think I ever have. No, you never thought that in the back of your mind, like a situation arose or something happened in your life and you're like, how am I going to get through this? How am I going to figure this out? No, and I, you know, I, I, with me and dude, and I used to be very pessimistic, but I've done some stupid shit and put myself in some very bad situations. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I've always had the mindset like, we'll, we'll figure this out. Like mm-hmm. some of it's been very stressful. Whether <laughs> facing jail time or, you know, but it's like, we'll, we'll figure it out. Like push forward, push forward. Mm-hmm. I, I have, too, made a lot of mistakes in my life, as yeah. is everyone. And I and maybe it's taken me now. I've kind of grown in the sense of now I believe whenever I'm faced with a situation that, hey, man, we'll, we'll figure it out. It's always, I've gotten to this point. Yeah. I've gotten to this point. point. Everything in my right. life, like, I've it, circumnavigated. And I look at my daughters now, and it worries me because I have my two daughters, and both are, like, stressed beyond belief they're going to college they're they're going two different directions so i'm gonna have daughters in two different states and um and they're worried you know they're they're super worried about the future and i guess i kind of get it like you're young you don't quite know what to expect Mm -hmm. but um i I have to keep reminding them that like you've made it this far like you've you know you have to take the leap you have to take the leap you have to have trust just go yeah faith in yourself i think if we want to go and talk about it a little bit, you t- you talk about the depression rates in teenagers yeah. right now that is skyrocketing. Yeah. The amount of sui- amount of the big S's, the suicides, as well as uh, depression rates have gone off the roof because of social media and everything. I couldn't yeah. imagine growing up and being on social media and seeing people that are my age being successful, right? What regardless of whatever they did and whatever they did, right? If they're an influencer, if they just did like a YouTuber, whatever it is. And then they're taking pictures by the Lamborghini and you're like 20 years old and you're like, well, I haven't done anything. I'm yeah. not making any money. Like, how do I get to this? How do, how did they make all this money at 20 years old? Mm-hmm. Millionaire, whatever. Like it'd be hard growing up and seeing that constantly in your face Yeah. and thinking that you're not enough. Yeah. But you are. Yeah. You know, and that's, that's the thing that sucks is they don't see it. Like, but my one daughter is so like headstrong. She's got to be perfect in everything. And if she, um, like, she gets frustrated if she gets a C on an assignment, and she she has all these scholarships rolling in, and but um, but she's just stressed out all the time. I'm like, chill the fuck out, <laughs> you know? Like, yeah. You already have scholarships coming in. Like that's that's step one, right? Yeah. You're, you're ahead of your peers, and you're ahead of the, a lot of your peers. And, uh, but this is high school and that's what these kids and it frustrates me because these kids think that like they're only seeing a hundred yards in front of them and they think that this is life. Dude, in high school, how were you? I, I wasn't a cool kid. I don't think I'm, I'm a cool kid now, You're but the cool kid, <laughs> but seriously, like, dude, I was like bullied back in high school. And like, I, I hated high school. I was coming out of high school. And experiencing life and getting into the sales forced me to to be uncomfortable, and it forced me to to be able to project and 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 like be more open. Yeah. And I just look at these high schoolers now, and they think that like this is oh fuck, this is supposed to be the time of my life, and I'm not where I should be. I'm not confident in myself, and it's like. I wasn't confident in myself no. until after 30. No, me too. Me too. I hit 30, and I think this is the most confident I've been in right. myself ever. And what's interesting is I look at a lot of people I went to high school with that were like the popular kids now, and I kind of see where they're at and, like, the direction I'm going. And it's like, <laughs> I don't but, know. But it took me until 30 to be confident in myself with all of that, with, with the bullying, with the failures, with everything thinking I'm not enough and it's all come to this point. It's like, I believe in myself. Right. I believe in what I do and I'm going to get through it. But I, I I can definitely put myself in her shoes and thinking, seeing hundred yards in front of you and being like, 
oh, am I going to get into this and college? What is it going to yeah. be next? I don't even really know what I want to do with my life. And, 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 and that's, the stressors. That's any, any kid, like, who, yeah, because that's one of her biggest stressors. She doesn't even know what the fuck she wants to do yet. And I'm like, you're not supposed to, right? Mm-hmm. You're not even 20. And that's why I try to explain to her, like, in your 20s, that's where you start to figure yourself out, right? Mm-hmm. Like, you're not supposed to have shit figured out. I still, 20s is when you, you're testing and you're, you're, you're going through the motions and you're going to have a lot of failures and stuff, right? Yeah. But. Yeah, well, think about it. It's 17 years old. What, how old is she? 16, 17? 17. 17. And trying to make a decision that is supposed to be the job that you're going to have for the rest of your life. Like, I don't know what I want to fucking be for the rest right. of my life. I, I didn't know. No, and then you're and, f- and what sucks is I see these people that like go after um, like being, going for their certifications, become a registered nurse, or maybe they want to become a, a doctor or something, and they start spending all this money and going through schooling, and they they get like halfway through it and they're like, oh fuck, I can't like, do this. I hate this. This fucking sucks because yeah. it's not at all what they expected. Yeah. So. Then you have student debt that's two hundred thousand dollars, and you can never pay it off for the rest of your life. Right. And uh, talk about corruption. Talk about student debt and colleges just sucking the life out of these students. <laughs> Imagine coming out with two hundred fifty thousand dollars worth of debt. I mean, I graduated college, and thank thankfully, you know, I was able to get grants and and a couple of scholarships and everything. But I still came out with like I was out of state. I went to Virginia Tech, but I still came out with like forty thousand dollars worth of debt. And a and and I went for criminology and granted like I did that like I did investigations yeah. or whatever but technically I didn't even need to have that fucking bachelor's degree to do that so yeah. it's like paying that off for what and then you have students that are going to college for whatever and coming out a business degree or just a blanket business degree and then coming out and being like what do I do with this oh well you actually have to ha- need more you need to go get your master's degree. Because you don't really have enough knowledge. And it's like, okay, uh, I'll put another $90,000 worth of debt on me. And it's like, hopefully I get this entry-level job at some business. Right. And you have $150,000 worth of debt. Dude, and I will tell you, like, I know we were talking about VA benefits and stuff like that. And make sure you save. But the, the one thing I will praise the military for is their actual benefits, mm-hmm. right? When it comes to like tuition assistance, stuff like that, like they play, I out of pocket, I paid $150 for my degree. Mm-hmm. Um, I used my tuition assistance while I was in. And then of course, when you go through military training, so much of it can be transitioned over towards credit for college. So a bunch of the stuff that I took, like even combat lifesaver course, earned me college credits basic rifle marksmanship earned me college credits. So you, you take all this stuff that you go through the military, you dump it in. And then, um, and then, yeah, I used all my tuition assistance. I haven't even touched my GI bill and my daughter who's stressed out about college. Now this post nine 11 GI bill, I can extend that, that, that service to her. Yeah. You can transfer it over, transfer it over. Mm-hmm. So, um, and I've told her about that. Like, Hey, you've got a bucket of money too. You've got your, your scholarships, got this bucket of money that I can transfer to you. Like, we're going to be all right. Like, don't worry about it. But um, you're right. I, I, anybody who's looking, as long as you're willing, but it goes back to um, having the determination and, and the drive to do it. Because when I was in, I was taking online courses while I was in Afghanistan. I was in combat, you know, a combat zone. And I'm taking fucking tests and taking classes online long mm-hmm. distance but uh well a lot of my friends were sitting in their shoes their their little huts like playing video games or watching the dvds that they got from the the haji hut mm-hmm. i was taking co- courses mm-hmm. but literally at the end of my fucking six years in the army all i had to pay was my 150 dollars for my graduation graduation certificate had a bachelor's yeah yeah and the recruiting levels are very low right now. They're having a hard time getting people to sign up for the military after the whole Afghanistan thing. And yeah. and it's a different generation, so how do you get those those kids? But I agree with you. I think uh, especially, like, with the Air Force, because I can only speak with the Air Force, like, there's a lot of skills that you can learn going into a certain AFSC. Like, 
you can learn how to be a civil engineer. You can learn how to be military police. You can learn how to be a um, maintenance. You can do in the F-15s. And a lot of those people learn those skills, and then they go out, and they go to a civilian job and do the same thing. And they get other skills and upgrades, and, and you're not getting that. So there are a lot of benefits to joining the military too. But you got to remember, when you sign on the dotted line, you're the property you're of the property. U.S. government. Yeah, so true. there there is that give and take. <laughs> I mean, I mean it's, yeah. it's true, right? Because yeah. at a at a split notice, hey, you're going here. Pack your bags. We don't know when you're going to be back. Yeah, and that's that's the risk of it. But um, I've learned a lot. I know you learned a lot. I wouldn't be the person that I am if I didn't join the military. So as oh, much as I am, dude. as much as and we we talk about current events and what what's coming up and everything and all of the downsides of the military there's also a lot of, a lot upsides, of positives but it's right. all, but it's the yin give and yang take. of life give right take, anything right. you do is going to have ups and downs right 100%. just the military <laughs> there are a lot of hazards i mean again property yeah. of the u.s government like you sign on the dotted line saying you're going to uh support and defend the constitution of the united states with your life yep so yeah yeah it, there is a lot of pros and cons but i think that um yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I, th- I feel that people just need to, if you're in a bad situation, you don't know, like, what direction to go, and you need assistance, then the military is a great route to go. Yeah. But, but like your daughter, like your daughter. Like, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want her to go military. No, 100%. Okay. I would not want her Maybe to Air go. Force. Maybe if you're in the Air Force, you would say. Maybe. Different. Maybe. But, you know, she's got the smarts, and she's mm-hmm. done great, and she's got scholarships, and it's like, you know, go that route with it. But um, but I think for, for some of the people that come from, I don't even, and, and that's what's tough for me. Like, I didn't come from a broken home. I didn't come from a bad upbringing. Mm-hmm. Um, but I chose to go into the military. I felt like at the time I needed a change, like I needed to have purpose in my life. And, um, and I joined. And I'm happy I did because, like you, you had mentioned earlier, like that was the, the biggest growing moment for me. It helped me understand like life, life. Yeah. Well, like there's when you're over there and you see how other people are living and, um, <laughs> yeah, it, it makes see how you, fortunate we are. How, exactly. Exactly. But we have to uphold everything and uphold the constitution because without, a, without it, we, we are, we yeah. could become them. Right. That's the only thing that stands from us and them, you know? But I think there is to say because there are a lot of people lost right now. There's a ton of people, especially if you're in high school looking and how I talked to, I've talked to a lot of high schoolers and there, and it was like, what do you want to do? I want to be an influencer. I want to be a fucking influencer when yeah. you grow up. There's something to say about joining the military. I'm personally under the impression that everyone should serve their country in one way or the other. You get a, you get, you, whether it's the military, whether it's civil service, you know, whether you join the Peace Corps and, and you just go that route. But it's something to say about doing something that's bigger than you. Yeah. And I feel like a lot of people are missing that. Yeah. It's, it's all about purpose. It's all about purpose. That's, that's the main reason I joined was I felt like I needed to have purpose in my life. And did you get that purpose? 100%. And, the, and, the, and there's a lot of people that are lost and there's a lot of veterans that are lost because they lose that purpose afterwards. Yeah. 100% on that too. Like I see a lot of guys that get out and they, they lose that purpose because it's difficult when you leave the military and you take out, off that uniform, you lose your identity because that identity that you've had was that uniform for so long. So when you take it off, you have to find your next mission and that's essentially what me and you have done. It's like, how do I support that same mission to have the camaraderie to help, you know, fight the fight? Yeah, it's building that community. I've talked to a lady the um, the other day. We were texting uh, Instagram back and forth, and she was talking about losing the community after that she retired from the military, and she feels like there's no community out here. And no. I was like, yeah, I could see that. Um, you know, luckily for me and you, we built that community. You have to build, build your own. You, you, that's, that's, that was my thing is like you have to build your own community. If you don't have one, step up and build one. Yeah. But don't expect anyone to do it for you. And 
I, I, I think there are, I mean, a lot, there's so many people that are lost out there, man. It's sad. Um, but yeah, there's so many. I think the gym, obviously, is the big one for us, but also with the UXO supplements, with Until Death, it's, you know, I'm trying to build build that community of like-minded people that I found in the military yeah. that are goal-oriented, that are driven, um, that aren't just okay with being complacent and sitting on their ass status and quo. status quo. And it, I'm not saying, and it, if it works for you, if you're okay working a nine-to-five job, going home at night, watching Netflix, that's cool, man. That's, if, mm. that, if, that, if that's okay with you, if you're all right with that, who am I to say that that, that isn't okay? No. I'm fucking nothing. But I'm just saying for me, I want to build a community of that. And I think that we, we have that out here, which is fortunate, but there's a lot of people that don't have that. Yeah. So, black sheep narrative. <laughs> Deep. Miami Vice uh, vibes with these colors on the background. We do. I think of Vice City. You ever play that game? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> Uh, I, don't play, I don't play video games much anymore, but yeah, I played that one. I don't either. Um, yeah, there's not. Yeah. But um, be on the lookout. I'm sure we're going to be launching some merch here pretty quick. Yep. Get your Black Sheep Narrative merch. Also look for a UXO merch. They just dropped new shirts. Oh, Battle Tees. Nick's our model uh, for yeah. it, the battle, battle ready tee. Yeah. Ooh, limited edition. Damn. I'm going to keep. Yeah. Mm. I'm going to keep talking mm. up that printer, man. It's. There's there's not one in the valley. People coming all around to check this out. Yeah. And UXO supplements we, we, has it. We, we only <laughs> motherfuckers that have this printer. <laughs> yeah. And we're still figuring out how to work it. 100%. Yeah. Trial but, and error. It's been fun. Yeah. But anyways, we appreciate you guys tuning in. Please, if you get anything from these, uh, drop us a like. Drop yeah, us a like, share. Like or comment. I know last time I said I was ugly and someone commented that I wasn't ugly, and I appreciate you. Thank you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but anything. Yeah, Kurt, I saw um, that. We have a big podcast coming up. A big one. I'm telling you, the majority of our listeners are going to know this guest that comes on. So it's going to be fascinating and interesting, and I'm yeah, excited, I'm excited. To, to navigate the waters with him to see, see what he'll talk about. Yep. And I'm going to push the limits. His schedule is super tight. So I mean, literally, he said, we've got an hour. <laughs> that's fine. He's like, that's all we've got. <laughs> I'll, I'll um, give it to him in an he, hour. He's got filming. He's got other shit going on. But um, yeah, dude, I'm, I'm stoked he's coming on. Yeah, that's going to be a cool one. But all right, everybody. Black Sheep Narrative is out. Wake me up. I'm trapped in my nightmare.